Um, so just very simply component colors. Um, that this this is probably most of you recognize this as when you draw a sketch, uh, when you create an assembly. Um, it's this lovely satin steel color. Now this guy has very kindly actually done a few other colors, but fundamentally it's all sort of like a gray world that we live in. Um, you can, you can, if you go to inspect, um, and sorry, it's display component colors. Um, display component colors will basically make everything look lovely in pretty colors. Um, but the main reason for it is each component is a different color. Now, when you're creating very complex assemblies, which obviously this is, um, it's nice to know when you have particular colors so you know you're working on the right component. Um, because Russ, I'm sure, will agree, very, very often when you're working with components, you start making sketches on some other random component somewhere. And then you can't work out why everything's just not working and it's all just a complete mess and you're extruding things in the wrong component into a new body and it just all gets very confusing. So component colors will help you uh, identify to make sure that you're on the right component when you're doing things. Um, now I went into obviously inspect uh, display component colors, but there is obviously a shortcut, which is shift N. Okay, so if you wanna turn it on and off, shift N, shift N, Shift N, Shift N. Now, one thing you'll notice down here as well, um, it actually covers it down the bottom on the timeline, um, and it also covers it down this little side. The best way to describe it is the little colored tabs that you get um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a folder. If you're very good at school, which I wasn't, and you had a folder and you did everything all color coordinated, this is very similar. I know this because my daughter's very clever and she did. Um, now, you don't actually have to only have the body in all the different colors. Um, you can actually go down to here and you can do component color swatch. Now, it doesn't make the body the pretty colors, but it does switch it on on the timeline and up the side on the browser. OK, um, the other thing that I would like to just make sure I'm following my notes. Yes. Uh, so we go shift N. So that will bring the component colors up. Let's say you have an aversion to green, Les, and you don't like it. OK, so we got their bottle jack housing. If we right click that, we can cycle component colors so we can make that. So I've got another green. Obviously, it's going to do that, isn't it? <laughs> Love it. Uh, so but you can cycle component colors until we get a color that Les can see. OK, so now we've got a nice orange. Okay, So if you don't like the color of something, you can cycle the component colors. Um, now, one, one good thing, let's say uh, you want to uh, work on this, this round thing here in the middle. Um, now, obviously, when you click that component, it will put the little dotted lines under the bottle jack housing. Now, what you can do is if you click that one, that means guaranteed that you are only working on that component. But something else has happened. If you have on this setting hide all inactive features instead of having the world's longest timeline and try and work out where things are if you have hide all inactive features because we have only got the bottle jack housing selected what you will notice now is that your timeline is very small it's easy to manage now there is another thing here kind of nothing to do with component colors um, but if you right click that one and you isolate because at the moment We've got like all the other bits all sort of shaded out and it's, it's still a little bit confusing, isn't it? So what we could do is we could right click and we could isolate. Now what we have is we have that, whatever it is, bottle jack housing. We know we're definitely working on that because the orange line shows up at the bottom. And we have now a very small timeline that we can follow in somebody else's creation of this thing. So if we wanted to start from the beginning of the timeline so let's say we go to there it disappears it did make a slight muck up there but we're not going to we're not going to mention that um so what we know there is we could right click that we can edit the sketch and we can start working out how these people uh at autodesk create these models because we can look at their timeline and you look at a bottle jack and you think wow that's confusing that must have took like a million hours to produce it really didn't because it's broken down into individual components and we can see this guy 
there's a bit of a naff sketch because there's like three million dimensions on it, but it, 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 it works. So we can see how he's done that sketch. Now, the great thing is that if you wanted to then adjust that bottle housing, um, you could obviously then just go into this sketch and change one of the dimensions and that would change that. Um, so we can see that he created a sketch that you can see there. Well, you can't see it because it's hidden. But if I do that one, you can see that he created, sorry, a sketch. Then he did a revolve. Well, we've covered that, haven't we? Um, then he created an offset plane. Don't think we've covered that yet. But anyway, it's an offset plane. Um, at the moment, you can't see that offset plane. But what it's done is it's created a folder called construction. But I'm not going to go into it too much because I don't think we've covered this. But he has put there an offset plane. Which is well, I think Russ did cover it, didn't he? On the on the bit. So the offset plane is is that thing there. Um, then he created another sketch, um, which again you can't see because it's hidden. So he created like a little hole there on a sketch on this offset plane. Uh, then he uh, did an extrude. So he's gone into the body. Uh, I just grab that. He's gone into there and made a hole. Um, then he has made another sketch. Uh, anyway, oh, it's hidden in it. That's why. Sorry, um, he's made another circle around that other circle, and this is why it's not important that you do lock the sketches down because clearly this this guy has created this without locking sketches down. But certain ones he has, and I think that that's why I think there are certain sketches that you do need to lock down. Um, so then he's done another extrude, so he's extruded that a little bit into the body. And then he's done a fillet, um, which has just made a little sort of curvy bit around there. But we'll cover that at a later stage. Um, so although this whole thing looks very complicated, um, when you break it down into individual components, it's actually a small thing, which all of you could create that because you, you, uh, we've covered all, all, all those items so far. Um, so what we can then do is we finish there. So if we right click and then we unisolate, you're going to notice something very strange. And you'll notice that the whole thing is completely mucked up. I've completely ruined it, but I haven't. One, this is a gotcha that you've got to be very careful of. I've stopped the timeline at the end of that component. There is still a load more on the timeline. So it is important that if it all goes peak on like this, that you go to the end of the timeline and suddenly you'll find everything comes back together. And that's the power of parametric modeling in Fusion 360.